in a position of, of following that, but uh, my name is Betsy Smith. I am the President and Chief Executive of the Central Park Conservancy, and I want to welcome you all here today. It's a, it's a very important day for the Central Park Conservancy, and we're just thrilled to share it with, with all of you. Um, we are unveiling the design that is going to complete our decades-long transformation of the north end of Central Park. In fact, it really is the capstone project of our 40-year effort to restore Central Park. So there actually is sort of a double whammy, so to speak, in, in, in the impact of this, of this facility on our work. Uh, in the 40 years that the Central Park Conservancy has been working in the park, we have marshaled over a billion dollars to restore this, this urban treasure. As, as someone says, 843 acres of sanity. That's about right. Uh, we're tremendously proud of this project. Uh, it is the biggest that the Central Park Conservancy has undertaken. It is a beautiful new recreation facility, as you heard in the film, and, a and it is the restoration of a historic landscape uh, that had been blocked off by the massive wall of the pool. Uh, we are going to reopen the views, reconnect the pathway through the north end and repair a natural flow of water that had been severed for more than 50 years. Uh, the building that we're in right now, we created actually in 1993. There's a plaque outside. Uh, it was the park's first visitor center. And it was part of the flagship project that the Central Park Conservancy undertook to restore the North End uh, and the 11-acre Harlem Mirror. Um, and I just want to uh, make a note I'm going to introduce later, of course, again, Chris Nolan, who um, has been very involved in the design of this feature, but he has been involved in so many of the restoration projects around the city and I believe this was one of those first ones, so your mark is everywhere. As many of you may know, uh, the pool and rink, uh, the Lasker pool and rink, has really had, had problems since the day it opened in 1966. Uh, and when the city came to us in 2015 and asked us to help them repair the facility, we said, well, after some research, we really feel that that facility has outlived its, its natural life. But if the city would like us to go back and re-envision a whole new facility, we would do that, which we did. And a year later, we came back uh, with this beautiful new uh, pool and rink design, seamlessly integrated into the landscape of the park. And you'll hear much more about that later. Um, I mentioned Chris Nolan's terrific work, and he has been working closely with Susie Rodriguez um, of the Susie T. Rodriguez architectural design firm in collaboration in collaboration with Mitchell Jurgula. Um, and Chris and Susie will be talking a little bit more about this design later. But they have created um, a design that achieves one of the Conservancy's largest goals and highest goals, which is connecting recreational activities with the restorative and uplifting experience that is actually the essence of Central Park. I want to acknowledge um, all of my colleagues in the Conservancy, and particular, particularly their work with um, all of our friends and partners in the surrounding communities. Um, we have been working with our friends up here for decades. Um, so we're very proud of our relationships, and they have helped inform this design. Um, over the past several months, we have commenced work with the community boards, which really um, starts the formal public review process uh, for this facility. We hope to have a groundbreaking in the spring of 2021 and be finished with something new to present to the East Harlem community for the pool season of 2024. So we can't quite hold our breath that long, but we, we can't wait until that, until that moment comes. I'd like to introduce Tom Kempner, uh, who is the chair of the board of the Central Park Conservancy. He's been a terrific partner for me, a great uh, benefactor to the park and to the city. And I'd like to actually ask for a round of applause for Tom, who's done so much for the Central Park Conservancy. Thank you. <clears throat> wow, thank you, Betsy, for such a great introduction, more than I deserve. As you all know, Betsy became our CEO about a year ago. It's been an amazing year. And with that, um, her vision to complete a 40-year restoration of Central Park, this was one of our earlier projects, as she said, and moved towards continued stewardship through a commitment 
to financial sustainability as well as operational excellence. The major project we're unveiling today, it's the biggest one we've ever undertaken, is also the first major initiative that Betsy is spearheading. It's a bold and important start. And it's great to work alongside her on such an amazing project, as well as her team. Thank you, Chris. Um, while we are no longer concerned with saving Central Park, as we were 40 years ago, we understand all too well that the park is fragile. And we need to focus on maintaining this great experience for all users. It's a gem, and we got a perfect day today. We are proud to have earned the public's trust and confidence through our decades of restoring, managing, and enhancing Central Park. And we're eager to see how this magnificent new project will improve the lives of all in New York. This project also reflects our ongoing collaboration between our organization and the City of New York. When we are one of the oldest and most successful public-private partnerships in the entire world. We rely on our collaboration with the City of New York, and for this project, we are immensely grateful to have received the City's agreement to take such an expansive and amazing approach. This is still how great things happen in New York City. So with that, please let me introduce to you the man who makes it all happen for us, our Parks Commissioner, Mitchell Silver. Thank you, Tom, and good morning. Uh, I am so excited to be here for the unveiling of the new design here at the Harlem Mirror. I want to take a moment to thank a few people responsible for helping us get here today. Uh, first, Mayor Bill de Blasio for his generous 50 million contribution to the future of this site. Our partners in all things Central Park, the Central Park Conservancy, who has raised $100 million for this project. Thank you to the board chair, Tom Kempner, President and CEO, Fessy Smith, Chief Landscape Architect, Chris Nolan, and the entire design team and staff at the Conservancy who helped keep this park so beautiful. Also would like to acknowledge the Manhattan Borough President, Gail Brewer, and Council Member Peter Koo, who also chairs the Parks Committee for the City Council. We are so thrilled to be working here with the Conservancy on this project. The vision reimagines the North End and helps make Central Park more open, accessible, and enjoyable more than ever. As with all parks projects, this thoughtful design was informed by community input. The project will increase recreational possibilities around the Harlem Mirror while respecting and enhancing the natural setting. It will rejoin communities and water bodies connecting parks and diverse user groups while improving the area's ecology. And it's important to note that this project also has support of the administration's commitment to equity by creating a new pool and rink that will better serve Harlem and East Harlem residents and those who visit Northern Manhattan and the Bronx. I cannot wait to see this project's positive impact will have on the incredible park experience for decades to come. Personally, as a runner, I run for Harlem Run, and we run this course on a regular basis, and I can tell you, every time we run past uh, both the rink, I point out, which most people don't know, the waterfall and the stream that connects into the Harlem Mirror itself. So I'm very excited about this project, and I will eagerly be there in spring of 2021 to break ground on this incredible project. So we're very fortunate to have Gail Brewer with us this morning, Manhattan's borough president. She's with us today. She's passionate about all things Manhattan. She's been tremendously supportive of this project. So please put your hands together as we invite Gail Brewer up to the podium. Thank you very much, Commissioner Silver, and good morning to everyone. I am Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President, and I'm usually complaining about something. I ain't got nothing to complain about today. <laughs> this is a phenomenal project. Guess what? Everybody loves it. Can you imagine in New York City or in Manhattan that everybody loves it? Um, it's really a great day, and I want to say that from my perspective, having brought my kids here to skate over time, to know that it's going to be something that will address the needs of 
Yes, Harlem residents, but the, I don't know, 42 million people uh, who come to the park, and I know uh, the chair indicated that it's a fragile park because so many people are here, but this will make a big difference and it'll be part of the stewardship that you have uh, maintained. And I want to thank Betsy Smith. She's accessible, she's normal, she's fabulous, and she's a great chair. I deal with a lot of abnormal people. So I do every day. <laughs> so congratulations to the Central Park Conservancy, to Chris. Um, 40 years you've been working, as you heard, with New Yorkers to restore and care for this park. I know you have been working uh, closely with the Harlem community. I recognize some wonderful people in the video who are the leaders in the community, and I know that they are very, very supportive. Year-round recreation, reconnection to the rest of the park, to Harlem, all of that is important. And this work ensures that all neighbors of the park will have access to the full benefits of the park and all its natural beauty. Um, we know well that the old facility was well used, whether it was fishing or skating, whatever, but that wall that you run into will be gone. There are so many aspects. I came here for the er one of the earlier sessions and you could see the design. So you listen to the community. You held several meetings to get input, not just one. That's impressive. And I think the plan recaptures the historic Central Park. I'm sure there'll be some architect somewhere who will complain, but you're not gonna get any complaints from me. <laughs> Better access uh, and more efficient space, developing the mirror. You're gonna figure out how to use the indoor and the outdoor space so brilliantly and so you'll have enhanced program space, which we desperately need here in the northern part of the park and everywhere. So congratulations to the community board, to the outreach, and to everyone, and I'm sure that this is going to be something that will last generations, but people will not remember that you did all this work to make it what it's going to be and get to the input, but I don't forget that. Thank you very much. I didn't know, but I am now introducing a wonderful council member from the borough of Queens, but he definitely understands parks. Come on up, council member. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council member Koo. Thank you, Board President Poo. Yeah. Thank you, um, Central Park Conservancy, President and CEO Elizabeth Smith, and also uh, Tom uh, Kipner, the chairman, right? yeah. and our commissioner, beloved commissioner Mitchell Silver, um, and also um, Chris Nolan, right? the architect here. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, my name is Councilmember Peter Ku. I was recently, recently named chair of the uh, New York City Council's uh, Committee on Parks and Recreation. My home district in Queens is likewise filled with parks that are treasured by our constituents. In fact, I represent a portion of Queens' largest park, Flushing, Corona, Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, our home of the U.S. Open, the City Field, and two World's Fairs before, like, in, I don't know how many years ago, <laughs> 64 and, yeah, yeah. And we have also recently established an alliance that provides supplemental support, maintenance, and activities. But I have to say I'm amazed of the accomplishments of the Central Park Conservancies and everything you have done to make Central Park the best part, not only in New York City, but in the whole world. With more than a billion dollars in investments since 1980, the Conservancy has transformed Central Park into one of the world's most majestic urban green spaces, really a true oasis here. Like the rest of you, I am eagerly looking forward to today's design. We must continue to make improvements to Central Park. 
just as we must continue to support parks all across the city. And the best way to do that is through public-private partnerships. I look forward to working with I look forward to working with uh, more of you, and especially to learn uh, more from you about how we can make sure all the parts across the city can achieve the same level of excellence that you have so masterfully achieved here. Congratulations on today's achievements. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Reddick, and I've been working with the, uh, Central Park Conservancy since the 1990s, uh, focused on engagement of the Harlem community and the surrounding neighborhoods. For those of us who have lived in Harlem since the 1980s and remember uh, the condition of, of the park, uh, this has been an incredible restoration of those conditions over the last 30 years. The building that we're actually in today was part of that public-private uh, partnership where the community actually outlined what, how they saw using this space and helped bring about the design of the plaza just outside of where, we're sta where you are today. Uh, there's programming in that plaza that, has, that came out of that initiative that still goes on. Uh, you can come here in the summer and uh, salsa uh, to Latin music, uh, swing dance to jazz, or just enjoy the music and the comfort of being in this end of the, of the park. For this Northern End project, we've been meeting with people of the community for more than a year. Uh, we brought together swimmers, ice skaters, hockey players, birders, runners, picnickers, and families, people who use the park in every uh, imaginable way. We've listened to what they've had to say, and these groups have all had specific needs and concerns around their particular activities, but above that, they have all given great value to beyond that specific interest to the beauty and the engagement with the physical uh, park. In that effort, uh, we have worked in promoting these efforts and bringing together the park user around the development efforts uh, of this project. Uh, all this effort, though, would be for naught if it wasn't being uh, taken in and guided by a, a, a team of people who care about what the public has to say and engages their point of view in the actuality of creating the design. And we could have had no better steward uh, to that effort uh, than Chris Nolan, the landscape architect uh, of the project. Uh, you need uh, empowered leadership and visionary, but you also need determination. And he's been the captain of this charge uh, for over a year in, in, in advancing the project. I feel the project, is, as it's going to be laid before you, addresses a, a, a myriad of problems that were in this end of the park uh, and completes the connection, as other people have said in the talks, between the, this northern end and the beautiful ravine and the natural bodies just beyond what I call the Hoover Dam of the pool. Uh, to to the corner. Uh, I never saw that side of the park, you know, and I lived up here 20 years because of that blockage that I was directed there. And uh, this, so the team, uh, under Chris's guidance, is putting forth a very stunning design, which you'll see today. And so it's my pleasure to introduce Chris to make that presentation. Thank you, John. This has been a career of a lifetime. When I started in 1989, I thought I'd be here for two years, um, and it's 30 years later. And as the park's landscape architect for many years, I've learned from countless park users two fundamental things about Central Park. One, that the genius of its design is really quite simple. It's to not be the opposite of the city. And two, that people love and need Central Park. A commitment to the park's value and connecting us with nature as an antidote to these pressures of urban life, something that is as critical today as it was in the 19th century, has guided our restoration work for almost 40 years and creates a clear vision for this project. Our primary goal is not only to rebuild a failing facility, but to complete the restoration of the north end of the park by connecting our early work to restore the Harlem Mirror, which you see outside, with the more recent transformation of the ravine in the north woods. This requires correcting impaired hydrology, healing the damaged landscape, restoring severed pedestrian connections. 
the mutual goal of preserving the recreational resource so valuable in the facility that exists today while restoring the landscape requires a seamless integration of architecture and landscape. It's been a rewarding collaboration with an architect who really understands this, and it's my pleasure to introduce Susie Rodriguez. Always necessary. Chris, thank you very much. It's an honor to be collaborating with the Conservancy to reimagine this part of Central Park at the intersection of history, landscape, recreation, and the city. As the architect for the project, in partnership with John Doherty of Mitchell Jurgala, along with an amazing team, including many experts in the respective fields of design and engineering, this is an incredible opportunity for us to build upon the unique landscape and historical framework envisioned by Olmsted and Vox. With this project, we will reconnect the Harlem Mirror and the surrounding community to the rest of the park. Since 1966, access and connections for people and nature through the site have been severely compromised, greatly enhanced by the inspired work of the Conservancy over the last 40 years, the northern end of the park has only one project left to complete. With the demolition of the Lasker facility, the project will remove an imposing and incongruous structure that acts as a physical and visual barrier between the north end and the rest of the park. While an important place of recreation, the scale of the existing facility overwhelms the site and has been plagued by systemic problems from the outset, resulting from poor siting and is currently in a state of disrepair. Developing a concept to transform the site has involved looking carefully at the evolving history of the park within the curvilinear frame and sloping topography of Olmsted and Vox's original design of the park drive. A critical aspect of renewing this threshold includes restoring the historic water course and extending the pedestrian pathway to create uninterrupted access from the Mirror to West 100th Street. Shifting the original location of the water course to the western edge of the site and rotating the building to the east creates the potential to frame an outdoor space for recreation with a new rink and pool inspired by the tradition of building that fuses architecture and landscape we look to examples of that within the park. One of the most familiar and spectacular examples of that is Bethesda Fountain, where a grand terraced landscape gives way to a magnificent hall below, full of color and texture. Similarly, with the new facility, we will invert the idea of building as object to create a building that frames the landscape with views back to the mirror and the city beyond. The proposed project will replace the aging and flood-prone Lasser rink structure with a new uh, swimming and skating experience that's seamlessly integrated into the park's historic setting. Relinking the network of pathways, accessible routes through the site will be established, along with views to Huddlestone Arch that have been eclipsed for decades by the Lasker facility. Through this project, we will renew this threshold and create a recreational experience that is integrated into the park's magnificent landscape, making it open to the public throughout the year. The pool will be framed by the new building to the east and the water course to the west. And in looking at the commissioner, I remember when we first showed you this and you said, where's the building? Uh, the shape of the pool, an elongated oval, maximizes its size and compatibility with the organic geometry of the park's design. Echoing the shape of the pool is a deck that includes a splash pad at its southern end. A landscape berm envelops it all to define an outdoor room set within the park's landscape. The pool will be transformed seasonally into a rink. And along the waterfront, a pergola and boardwalk will reconnect the activity of the mirror uh, to the mirror, which Chris will discuss shortly. Cut into the topography of the site, the integration of architecture and landscape come together to define both a recreational and a natural experience at mul multiple levels within the park. Summer, winter, day, and night, the building will have two faces. From above, a green roof that extends existing paths and landscape to form an overlook. 
will effectively cover the entire building. So when you come to the site for the first time, you'll probably not realize that you're standing on top of a building. From below, a light-filled gathering space with expansive views to the pool and rink and the surrounding landscape will be open to the public throughout the year. Large floor-to-ceiling glass doors punctuated by a series of wood columns along the entire length of the space will open up to the pool deck, creating a porch and shaded area during the summer season. Taking cues from the context, the primary materials of the building are wood, stone, and glass seen here in the facade of the building. These materials reinforce connections to the park setting amidst the topography and rock outcroppings of the area, as well as the beautiful stonework of a Huddlestone arch. The materials will be locally sourced and include the integration of bird-safe glass. Rock from the excavation of the hillside will be repurposed on site as substrate for the pool, fill for the islands in the mirror, and potentially to create the stone walls that surround and frame the pool. And finally, beyond materials, the overall renewal of the site has been informed from the outset by creating a truly sustainable strategy, one that minimizes use of natural materials to construct and to operate the facility. A few highlights include an earthen thermal blanket that will insulate the interior, minimizing the use of building systems to keep it cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Vegetated roofs to restore the ecosystem will eliminate heat island effect and reduce the building's impact on the city's stormwater treatment system. The building's operable facade will provide daylight and views and allow for natural stack ventilation, providing summer cooling and eliminating the need for air conditioning in all but a few back of house spaces. Uh, the project will be designed to achieve LEED Gold rating and will comply with local law requirements regarding energy use for New York City owned buildings. We are extremely excited about the importance of this project in reconnecting the park to the community and reimagining the site as an experience that improves the quality of life for New Yorkers, creating more park when it's needed more than ever. I'll now turn it over to Chris, who will describe the transformation of the landscape. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. As Susie indicated, the 1960 design approach was to build a recreational facility on the landscape, a building as object. We've inverted that design approach, seamlessly integrating the facility into the landscape and connecting the recreational experience to nature, which is the fundamental purpose of Central Park. In the 1860s, our site was predominantly landscape. In 1966, the building dominated. Our design inverts that once again, and once again, the landscape is dominant, enveloping the building and grounding the activities in the park. Inspired by the original purpose of the park, to provide lands a landscape experience like this, we transform what has become this into this. The restored stream course flows overland, correcting the hydrology, and the pedestrian path reconnects the North Woods to the Harlem Mirror and the community beyond. Inaccessible spaces become accessible. Running water and lush native plantings create a cooling effect and push the city away. Approaching from the north side, this becomes this, where the stream course empties into the mirror, a constructed freshwater marsh creates new habitat and improves the ecology. Zooming out to a bird's eye view, a waterside pergola and boardwalk provide the opportunity for nature exploration through the marsh and on the water body around a series of small islands. Providing the opportunity for expanding fishing and canoeing programs, bird watching, nature walking, and in the winter months, the boardwalk can be converted to a skate ribbing using synthetic ice. Providing an experience that is evocative of pond skating which was originally the park's most popular form of active recreation. This is a tremendously exciting project um, and an amazing transformation. Uh, and it would not be ha uh, possible without the partnership of the Conservancy um, with the City of New York and the tremendous capacity that's been built over time. Really the best way to understand the project um, is to actually get out in the park and see it. So our design team is going to be leading a series of tours. We hope all of you will be able to join us and the tours are gonna queue outside by the front door. 
Thank you all. I just wanted, I don't know if she's still here, but a big supporter, Lynn Kelly from New Yorker for Parks, I believe was also here. Just want to thank her for her campaign.